Hey guys, so today I'm just gonna go ahead and check out Cyanogamon 9 for my Samsung Galaxy S2 and I'm gonna go ahead and check out the stable build of Cyanogamon 9 from I think it's August I think and, and I also do know that the new version is out of the Cyanogi mod uh, but right now they aren't stable builds like there's Cyanogamon 10 out right now like nightly builds that aren't really that stable but they are rocking the latest version of Android 4.2.1 Jellybean and yes, 4.2.1 is out right now, and the reason it got rolled off for many Nexus devices like the Nexus 10 and the Nexus 4 and also like the Galaxy Nexus. And it contains a quick bug fix update to Android 4.2. So it, here I am though at Sino Game Mode 9 on like Samsung Galaxy S2, and I'm just gonna go ahead and make a very quick review of it because that's that's what I can do and that's what I like to do. So, uh, where should we start? Well, I think we should go ahead and start off by just going down here into settings, go down to about phone, and you can see that it's rocking Android 4 um, ICS. So it's not any, the new Android 4.1 Jelly Bean uh, or Android 4.2, that's also Jelly Bean. It's Android 4.0.4, so it's still rocking ice cream sandwich, okay? So that's something that you might wanna know. This is how it looks like uh, when you install it. And of course, I, I just changed the wallpaper over here, but they, it contains some Cyanogamo 9 uh, wallpapers already. As you can see, I've also changed the quick transi tra transition effect over here. If you go ahead and close the device like this, you can see that this is how the lock screen looks like. So it's a beautiful lock screen. Uh, if you go ahead and open it up over here, let's just go ahead and go, as you can see, it also has a blue theme to it. Uh, but let's just go ahead and uh, put out the notification area here. You can see the power widgets here at the top, which you can swipe and you can see that I can toggle a lot of things like Wi-Fi, uh, GPS, uh, and the Bluetooth. And I also have a ton of other things here in the power widget and I can edit all those things uh, in the settings area. So if I go, just go ahead and go here into settings, go up here to the top. It, first, it looks like the normal version of Android. You have Wi-Fi, you have Bluetooth, you have quick settings for that, you have data usage. Um, we'll quickly tap on that, you can see here, you can toggle your data usage. Very, very good thing here in Android 4. Uh, and also, of course, the, your more more you know standard things that is in every version of Android. Uh, but now, when we go down to interface, this is the cool thing with Sandra 9. It contains a lot of built-in tweaks already when you just after you have installed you can already start to play around with the launcher so if you just go ahead and start off here with the home screen and as you do know the home screens are these screens when you are here when you click on the home button these are your home screens basically so uh, if you just go ahead and hold it in like this here you can also see how it looks like um, you know the multitasking area when i hold in the home button and we can also just go ahead and take a quick look here. You can see when you tap up here, uh, you can quickly manage wallpaper, manage apps, and system settings. And you can also, of course, hold down like that and you know quickly toggle Synergy mode wallpapers, which we can take a quick look here. And we have a few of them. But if we go ahead and go back now, and I'm just gonna go ahead and quickly show you this. Uh, when we are in the home screen area, go down to launcher first. Home screen, we can quickly um, have the number of screens. Let's say you only want to have two screens or anything. You can quickly customize the settings over here and then you just tap OK. Uh, you also can pick your default screen if it's, uh, you know, if it's going down every time you click on the home button or <laughs> every time, yeah, you click on the, that, uh, you know, home button in the middle there, it will go to that screen. Uh, you can also have the grid size if you want to have more rows and more columns It's very 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 easy to edit that so you can have up to seven rows and seven columns Which is also pretty sweet if you want to have a lot you also have vertical pad padding horizontal padding if you like those things Also the consistent search bar which is pretty nice uh, when we go ahead and see here We have this consistent search bar which follows along uh, You know we can be here on different uh, home screens, but it, it continues to follow. So that's something also that's extremely, extremely nice there. And I definitely would, you know, recommend to have that. Uh, if you go ahead and go down here, you can see you have uh, other tools like uh, transition effects. You can also hide icon labels and things like that. But transition effect, you can see that I have this cube effect. That's not the standard uh, one, but I actually like it because it creates this kind of cool cube effect. As you can see here, when we go in slow, you can see there, I like it. I like it a lot. I think it's pretty sweet. And I also have it in the drawer over here. So as you can see here, 
it gives that kind of cool cube effect and you can have cube in or out effect so either you open up a cube or you you know go out of a cube or something so i think it's pretty sweet there and we'll go ahead and tap here again uh, you have some other quick settings here but if you go ahead and see here and that was just the home screen then we also have the drawer it kind of has the kind of same th th similar uh, things join with app is something that i don't think is, is in the stock version of android but basically what it means uh, is this is uh, in the default version of cyanogen mode is that of course when you go to draw you have apps and widgets and default mode is that it will continue to scroll to you know, until you read, we, we reach widgets which i like a lot i think it's extremely extremely useful over there so some quick nice launcher settings over there or, or you know drawer settings there that i actually do like a lot and then of course you have some other cool things uh, if you go ahead and tap here you also have one small little general thing there you know auto rotate screen uh, but of course you will not already have the power widgets here which i'm going to go ahead and talk about here pretty quick uh, very very soon and um, let's see here if you go ahead and go back uh, the lock screen uh, the lock screen of course the lock screen uh, first you have your normal screen security settings for lock screen if you want to edit that of course that's just the normal things if you want to have a lock or something then of course the background you can quickly color fill it with a color here if you prefer that instead of a custom wallpaper so as you can see i color fill it now with red if you do like that and i'm just gonna go ahead and go back to the default wallpaper you also have owner info you can add some random text like hey girl okay and every time now when i lock the device you can see hey girl that the text up there so a small little quick thing over there that you can go ahead and do uh, and um, if you go ahead and down you can also have weather and calendar and a slight shortcut which uh, i would recommend that you use uh, so as you do know um, let's see here you can see that you can add more things now when i'm in lock screen i have the camera here quick settings to go to the camera and then i could also use normal unlocks device but then i also have three more apps that i could add over here uh, so let's say I want to have messaging, go quickly to messaging or go quickly qu go quickly uh, to uh, call someone or something. Then I can quickly add that. So that is pretty cool. Uh, if you go ahead and go back and uh, let's go ahead and go back again. So that's basically the lock screen. And then also you have your themes. I only have one theme right now, but I'm pretty sure that you should be able to download more, like, more themes if you quickly want to customize the appearance of your smartphone. Then of course you have the system area uh, where you have the status bar, which is pretty cool. As you can see, I've edited the status bar a little bit. You may be in this video like, whoa, what the hell is that? Well, that's basically, I've edited it. Now, a cool thing with the status bar is you can basically remove everything up here in the top, as you can see right now. Uh, I'm just gonna go ahead and remove everything. So I'm just gonna go ahead and remove the battery icon, the clock icon, and the signal icon. As you can see now, it's totally clean up there at the top. Uh, it, one thing though that sucks is that you can't actually remove it totally, it feels like. Uh, so it looks a little bit weird when you go down like this. You don't have anything up there, it's just black, and it's not transparent, which uh, could be a little bit annoying, maybe. Uh, if you go ahead and go back into system and the status bar, let's go ahead and add a clock again. And of course the signal status on the battery that you can also, you have one choice to um, use the percentage here on the battery, which I think is pretty nice. And then of course, um, okay, let's go back to that normal icon over there. You also have brightness control, which I like. This was something that I had on, my, on the original TouchWiz on my Galaxy S2 brightness control. So you can swipe up here to customize the brightness of the device, which is extremely, extremely, extremely nice. You don't even have to open up notifications. So that's something that you might, might want to um, enable there. Uh, the notification drawer, of course, is uh, uh, this is the power widget that I was talking about. When you go down and you see all the notification over here, this up here is the notification, uh, or this is the power widget where you can have your quick settings so you don't have to go into the big settings. So you can quickly disable stuff. So as you can see right now, uh, you can change uh, the power widgets, what kind of power widgets you want, like go to sleep, to go Bluetooth, to go GPS. Uh, the thing that most people probably use is like Bluetooth and like GPS because that's th that's the thing many people toggle. 
uh, and uh, those are pretty 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 nice so power widget is something that you shouldn't use for but if you don't even like it you can quickly just go ahead and disable it over there uh, which is also pretty nice so you have some settings over there which is extremely nice so you can basically like customize almost like every single thing of the device or like many many things and if there's something that you can't customize you can just go ahead and go to google play and you know do it automatically but the cool thing with tanoga mod is that it has uh, all of these features uh, enable now i don't think there's if there's one thing that's probably negative is that they only have this kind of blue theme if you don't like blue uh, then that kind of sucks. They should have like a quick settings maybe to change that. That I would actually prefer that or like that. Um, so yeah, that's pretty nice. As you can see here, uh, I've already showed you these, but they have some uh, wallpapers already built in. Uh, so you might see something you like over here. Then you can just quickly go ahead and uh, use that. So let's see here, this is the one that I'm using right now, but of course you can quickly, 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 quickly customize that. You also have the font size, I never tried this, but wow, that's a huge ass font size. If you do like them big fonts, uh, then that might be something for you. And let's see here, <laughs> nice with an extremely big font if you have an old person over here. Also when I added this transition effect, uh, it feels like it's a little bit more smooth, which actually I do enjoy. Uh, but if you go ahead and go down now again, uh, go to the normal, normal font size. Sweet, uh, then you have normal device settings here. Actually I don't th think there's that many more new things over here. Uh, maybe a little bit here, Galaxy S2 settings, uh, you have some settings here, I don't think most people will do this, but you have, you know, sensor settings, haptic feedback, uh, I actually love haptic feedback, and then also I think that they could have a little bit more settings here in developer options, like ADB over network, root settings maybe, maybe some more things than the normal um, stock version, and then also you have an interesting down here, uh, performance. You can actually customize the CPU and stuff like that, and this could be kind of like dangerous if you don't know what you're doing, uh, probably, but you can customize the minimum CPU frequency and the maximum and set on boost and do all these kind of crazy things uh, with your device, and just be, be, be very, very careful when you're playing around with the device over there. Now, some more negative things it could also be with Sandwich Mod 9 is that it's like right now they haven't updated the stable build of Sandwich Mod 9 now for a few months, so it doesn't contain the latest version of Android. I mean, only ICS still. Um, I mean, like uh, Android Format 1 and Android Format 2 Jelly Bean contains a lot of nice features, like they've updated Google now so much. The new uh, clock app widget is so amazing in the new version of Android. And then also there's some things like you can't like when you get notifications you can't hold them in to see to you know force stop that program and uh, so that's something that I would like more. Of course you don't have like uh, probably like Google Now built in. I'm pretty sure. No, you don't have Google Now. So uh, of course uh, I'm probably gonna do a quick little also comparison. Uh, between uh, between Android 4 with Jelly Bean on my Galaxy Nexus because I recently made a review of that. So I'll probably make a comparison between that and also this Cyanogamon 9 build over here. If you have any more videos you want, want me to do on a specific RM or something like that, please let me know and I might be able to check it out. So yeah, and also, okay, I can also show off pretty quick here the, the camera app. So let's see here if I have another device over here. So if you see here how the camera app is, of course you don't have this also, this 360 degree thing uh, that is uh, well born in Android 42 Jelly Bean. And of course the camera app is different. You don't get settings when you just hold in, which is extremely nice with the new Android 42 Jelly Bean. And uh, you only have the normal panorama mode. As I said, you don't have that 360 photosphere effect. But uh, then, of course, you have these kind of like normal settings here for scene mode, exposure, white balance, and flash. So it's still pretty nice. Uh, you know, of course, both these are amazing deals of Android. Uh, I mean, Cyanogamo 9 is extremely, extremely nice. And this is also how the clock app looks like. You have the alarm app over there. Of course, you do know with the latest Android 42 Jelvin, you have everything. Uh, with clocks and timer and everything in just one single app which is also 
extremely extremely nice then of course i haven't checked out some of these apps but most of them are standard and then of course this is probably better for developers and stuff like that because you have some dev tools over here uh, you have the SP manager which I'm not sure what it is you have Apollo here which I've never seen before uh, but yeah if you want to go ahead and check it out if you want to know how to install if you have any questions please let me know and I might be able to help you or you might be able to get some help in the comment section down below but yeah until next time you have an awesome day right now and I'll see you all in the next video yes peace out